Joe Simpson, Skip Carey, welcomes you back to Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. As you can see, the field is covered, and the news is not overly good. They expect light showers for an hour or so, and then they're afraid that the showers might get heavier. This is the rain system, however, that is keeping Hurricane Luis away from the mainland of the United States, so I guess we should be thankful rather than pessimistic, and hopefully they'll be able to get the ball game in. We've had the singing of the national anthem, but they have shown no signs of taking the cover off the field, so we'll just have to wait and see. The Braves won the first game, 6-3, the suspended game. Polonia batting, a little broken bat grounder off the glove of Varis. That allowed Lemke to score what turned out to be the winning run. Marquise Grissom, the next batter, and he put a little icing on the cake with this two-run shot. All that off Rob Nen who gave up six runs in the inning, three of them in May, three of them in September, five of them earned, and the Braves went on to win the game 6-3 as Brad Woodall, who's now pitching down at Richmond, picks up his first Major League victory. If and when we get this game started, Steve Avery will pitch for Atlanta, and Pat Rapp will pitch for Florida, and ironically, they were the starting pitchers in what turned out to be the suspended game back on May 4th. Obviously, we've got some time to kill here, and we're not going to kill it. We're going to put it to good use. As my partner, Joe Simpson, just a few minutes ago down on the field, interviewed David Justice, the Braves' fine right fielder, and among the subjects discussed was the difference between the 95 Braves and the team in 1991. So take it away, Joe Simpson. All right, Skip, thanks. I'm down here with David Justice, and uh, I thought you'd be the perfect guy to ask this question of since you came up in 91, You've been through the wars the last few years. Now, all of a sudden, you guys seem to have a nice cushion heading into postseason play. Which do you prefer, the cushion or the, the battle to the end? Well, I definitely prefer the cushion, uh, no question. Because in that, in that series, well, in the season when we, we chased the uh, Giants and we finally caught them, that took a lot out of us. Um, that almost felt like a World Series right there, it, it, just in that race. So it's definitely a much more of a comfortable feeling um, having this big lead like this. What about the comparison between the ball clubs, between 91 and now? How do you feel about this year's team compared with teams that have been in the postseason earlier? That's a tough one to compare because every team that I've been on has been a good team. Um, I think this team right here has more young players. Um, those, team, those teams, our young players were like veterans. Um, we had Ronnie, me, um, you know, Merker, those kind of guys. They were, they were almost like veterans, although they were young. And then we had some veterans like Sid, Terry, we had Otis. Um, so there are differences between the teams, but um, talent-wise, both teams were very comparable. Because those races came down to the end in each of those seasons, there were great celebrations. Uh, it was like a culmination of a long-fought battle. Do you sense that that same celebration might take place this year? Uh, and given, too, that there are some new guys on this ball club that have never been through this before, do you anticipate a, a big celebration on this road trip? Well, I anticipate a celebration. I, you know, anytime you clinch and do the things that we've done in the past four years here in Atlanta, um, you know, it, there's a cause for a celebration. But for me personally, I don't think there'll ever be a celebration like the very first year when we won the West and the first time we went to the World Series. I just can't imagine celebrating any harder than that first year. But I'm sure for guys like Chipper and uh, Ryan and, and some of the young guys, for this to be their first, I'm sure they'll be just as excited uh, when we clinch as we were that first year. Talk to us real quick about your season. You've missed several games, yet your numbers, if you project them over 162 game season, be a terrific year. Are you pleased with what you're doing right now? Yeah, I think every player, though, feels like he can always do better. I mean, I feel like I could always play better, but I'm happy with where I am. Um, I don't pretty much beat myself up too much because I know every day I show up, I show up with the intentions to do the best I can. Um, it doesn't always work out that way, but I know my intentions are good. I know I work hard, so I just take whatever comes my way. Finish up strong. Yeah, definitely. David Justice, our guest, and Skip and I will be back at Joe Robbie Stadium with more right after this. Only one other major league game underway at this juncture. Cleveland leads Seattle 2-0 at the end of an inning and a half in Cleveland and the Braves of course beat Florida in the suspended game Harry Wendelstead making a decision right now about whether or not to take the cover off and we'll find out in just a moment whether or not he does and Bobby Cox is about to talk things over with Harry in the Atlanta dugout looks like they're going to take it off and try to get this game going how long we'll be able to play 
I don't know and I do know this that both managers are probably going to manage for one run because the forecast is not too good for the rest of the night. It's spotty. I mean it's off and on. It's typical Florida weather but more rain than is normally the case down here. They are going to take the cover off. There you say our sports psychologist Jack Llewellyn there with Bobby Cox. Bob didn't need any help tonight because his team won the first game by the score of 6 3. Not too long ago, within the past week, in fact, Don Sutton, a pretty good pitcher in his own right, a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame, had a visit with Braves relief pitcher Mark Wohlers, and they discussed what has happened with Wohlers and how he has arrived as a star in 1995. Here's Don. All right, Skip, thank you very much. We are with Mark Wohlers. We've been watching some video of you all week showing you striking out Tim Tuffle, which would have been four years ago, right? Yep. Your first save. I think a, a bunch of expectations were formed that night. Was it unfair that we were expecting you to become a closer overnight? I don't know if it was unfair. It was a little tough, only because a year ago I was in something, or a low A-ball team, and everything happened so quickly. And uh, I did get on a little roll that year, and, and, and carried me to the big leagues, but I still didn't really learn how to pitch and didn't really know how to pitch. And a lot of my learning had to come at the upper levels in the minor leagues and then even a little bit in the big leagues as far as learning how to pitch. So uh, the expectations were a little tough, but I mean, I thought back then I had the physical ability, but po probably not the mental ability to do it. Can you point to one thing that might have taken you over the hump to where you are now? I think any player will tell you it's just confidence. You know, I don't think uh, physically I'm that much different than I was before in the past. I just think my mental ability finally caught up with my physical ability and that little confidence might have got me over that final hump. Is it more fun having the responsibility? Because right now, Braves are in a pennant race, gonna go to postseason. You're the guy that has to get the job done in the ninth inning. It is fun. Even, and even though before in the past when I struggled, it was tough to get down only because I was always on a winning team. We were always going to postseason. Well, so when things weren't going well personally, it's tough to get down because 24 other guys are kicking some butt and we're going to postseason, we're having fun. So even though I wasn't contributing and as much as I would have liked to, you know, it was still kind of fun because I was still going to postseason, whereas now I feel like I'm contributing a little bit and we're all contributing a little bit down there in the bullpen. We're holding up our own and we feel like we're playing a little part in what we're accomplishing this year. You go down there in the first inning, but you really don't start getting anybody out till the ninth. What do you do with those other eight innings? Um, all of us down there, we talk about um, hitters. We talk about, you know, what pitches, if somebody might not have saw a pitch that one of the starters or somebody else might have thrown. Uh, we talk about that a little bit and kind of just try to stay at ease a little bit, maybe joke around until like maybe the fourth or fifth inning. We're always looking at hitters, watching the hitters, studying the hitters, but it's tough down there to stay completely focused 100% of the time from the first inning to the ninth inning. But for about the fourth inning, it's time to get the game face on and preparing for the later innings. Does the rush start coming? You can see the game developing. You can see one run lead going into the ninth inning. Does the rush start getting to you then? Before the ninth inning, probably about the sixth, seventh inning, you, start to, you feel the blood flowing a little bit. The adrenaline starts flowing. And and you know that you know if a certain situation comes up, depending on how many pitches um, the starter is throwing, you got a good chance to get in there. So you know, you're really focused probably like the sixth, seventh inning on. Nice going. It's been fun to watch. Mark Rollers set a Braves record. 21 consecutive saves without a blown save. You're going to see lots more of him before the year's over. You're going to see lots more Braves baseball right after we take this time out. Now they say that the first pitch hopefully will be thrown around 8.15 in game two. So about 18 minutes or so from now. If you just joined us, the Braves won the suspended game. They scored six in the ninth. Three of them back in May and three of them Tonight, an infield hit by Luis Polonia, a two-run homer by Marquise Grissom. Greg McMichael got the save, and the Braves won the suspended game by a score of 6-3. Right now, as you see Steve Avery about ready to go to work, and Pat Rapp likewise for the Marlins, we're going to send it back to our studios in Atlanta and give you somebody's opinion as to the 50, I don't know whose opinion this is, but somebody's opinion as to the 50 greatest home runs hit in Major League Baseball history. See if you agree. baseball's most memorable home run the night he eclipsed the babe he's sitting on 714 here's the pitch by Downing swinging there's a drive into left center field that ball is going to be out of here it's gone it's 715 there's 
the new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. The fireworks are going. Henry Aaron is coming around third. His teammates are at home plate, and listen to this crowd. Henry Aaron made his mark by hitting more home runs than a bona fide legend. But even the less prolific can be thrilled by a home run. Take Dwayne Kuyper of Cleveland, who went to bat almost 3,400 times in his career and only did this once. 1-0 pitch to the left-hand batter. He drives one down the right field line, headed for the wall, and it's gone! Dwayne Kuyper just hit his first major league. Hey, look at Dwayne on those bases. Oh, is he one happy ball player? For Dwayne, it was a career home run. One that was good for a career. Next stop, Brooklyn. The last game of the regular season where the Phillies' Dick Sisler had two men on in the 10th inning. Swinging a fly, very, very deep toward left field. A home run that gave the Phillies the 1950 pennant over Brooklyn. And Sisler, a niche in home run history. It would be 30 years before the Phillies would win another pennant. But first, Mike Schmidt looked to clinch the division on the next to last day of the year. The pitch to Schmidt. Long drive to left field. He buried it. He buried it way back. Out of here. Puts the Phillies up 6-4. Oh, what a drive by Schmidt. Unbelievable. He hit that thing deep to the seats in left field. And the Phillies greet Schmidt at the plate. Mike clasps his hands. He shakes hands with all of his teammates. What a wild scene in Montreal. The Phillies went on to win both the pennant and their first World Series. In Cincinnati, the stage was set for Johnny Bench night to honor perhaps the greatest catcher of all time. You have made this day complete. You have made it better than I could have ever written a script for. I thank you so much. My family thanks you. I appreciate you. And I'm gonna try like hell to play good for you tonight. Thank you. Well, that script got just a little better when the game began, and Johnny kept his word. There it is. He's to left. Cruz going back. And it's gone. Oh, my. A home run for Ben John Hill. Nice. Look at John. Number 389 in this crowd. Capacity is going crazy. Ted Williams was another guy who had a knack for rising to the occasion. Take, for instance, the last at bat of his amazing career. Well, you can bet your bottom dollar Williams would like to hit one out of here right now. There's a drive to deep right center. This may be gone. Drive way back there watching. Oh, Ted Williams. it that way. Nobody would believe it, so why even try? Phillies pitcher Rick Wise is an unlikely inclusion in the 50 greatest home runs, but in fact he hit six in 1971. Two in this game. There's a well-hit ball, deep left field, that might go. It is a home run for Rick Wise is second of the game. And what a story this is. <laughs> he is putting on quite a show here tonight. Can't pitch any better, and you can't hit any better. Well, actually, Wise did pitch better than he hit. 
And there's only one way a pitcher tops two home runs. Full count to Pete Rose. Well, it's gone down to the wire. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swing a line drive. He did it. Bukovic made the grab. Wise has done it. A no-hit, no-run game. In Cleveland, it was a most historic day as the first black manager made his debut. But Frank Robinson was a manager and a player, and he made darn sure that nobody forgot. It's to Robinson. Line drive to left field. Well back. It is gone. Well, I'd have to say that is quite a way to break it as a manager. Two of the 50 greatest home runs took place with Seattle, where the Mariners featured the first father and son ever to play together on the same team. And on this day, Ken Griffey Jr. and Sr. made home runs a family affair. The one thing that I've always said about Ken Griffey is that he is the best fastball hitter I've ever seen in my 20 plus years in the major leagues. Ken Griffey Jr. is on deck. Well hit the center field. Devon White going back. Gone! A two-run home run. And he can still hit anybody's fastball. <laughs> An instantaneous two-to-nothing Seattle lead. And 40-year-old Ken Griffey hits his third home run since coming to the Mariners. So here's Ken Jr. hitting 299, 19 homers and 67 RBIs. He hits one well to left center field. Dante Bichette. It's made back to first. back home runs. <laughs> what else can these guys do? Not to be outdone, says Junior. His 20th of the year. Welcome to Baltimore's Camden Yards, host of the 1993 All-Star Game, which in recent years has turned into a two-day extravaganza with stars everywhere. With the pressures of the season on hold, this was a festival of fun and frolic. Just how much fun? Follow around four-time All-Star Barry Larkin and find out. Come on. Oh yeah. How come you hit fifth and I'm hitting second? You only, you just a punch and Judy hitter. You a hit. Like I said, I think they got the names reversed. That's right. See, I'm the, I'm the table setter. You're right. the man that eats. That's right. I want you to tell everybody out there. Now tell me about this evolution about the middle infield is getting better looking every year. <laughs> you don't want to play two then. You don't, get don't. To get four you don't want to play two today? You don't. Well, he used to get three or four in the first when he wants to play two. Too hot today. Too hot. Now, now what about facing this guy right here, though? Now, see, Daryl Kyle now, all of a sudden this year, he's he getting that fork ball over for a strike now. Whereas before, he was just fastball, curveball. But he got the fork ball. I know what's up. I study. I do my homework. I got a base hit on that fork ball, too. He couldn't believe right. it. Yeah. <laughs> I voted for you. And I voted for you. Uh, I yeah, picked out two ballots. <laughs> Two. Just two. One for me, one for you. Yeah, that's it. Didn't feel nobody else's name in. It wasn't only baseball stars Larkin was running into. Barry, Barry. How you doing, baby? All right, baby. How you doing? You know Barry. What's up, Mike? How you doing, man? All right, good to see you. What's good to see you, Ma. Good to see you, partner. All right. Good. Yo, man, how's that? Uh... I can't hit no left-hander. For some reason, I just cannot hit a left-hander. <laughs> My shoulders are all tight all of a sudden. I got to lie down or stretch. Something rub some tobacco juice on my face. Spit on my foot. Wait, these are new shoes. I don't know what to do. These celebrities weren't here just for fun. They were participating in the charity home run contest. No hard feelings. Come right this way. Just set up. I had to. <laughs> hey, don't throw no jump, man. Uh. Oh, sheesh. It's right here. It's right here. Feel it right here. 
It's okay. It's all right. Oh! Utah Street! Tom Selleck won the Derby with the only home run. Of course, the big draw of the day was the real home run contest with the real home run hitters. Not surprisingly, that event turned out to be truly explosive. Wow. That may have hit the warehouse, and they announced it did. Wow. Ken Griffey Jr.'s warehouse shot was a first, but even that paled in comparison to this blast. He hit that one pretty yeah. well. <laughs> By Juan Gonzalez. Holy cow. No one has ever hit one that far in a game. Gonzalez blasted two monster shots and won the contest. Well, here we are, Skip and Joe back again at the ballpark, finally about to get this game started as the Braves and the Marlins meet in the regular game after the Braves won the suspended game. Everything very good tonight except for the rain delay. Now if we can just get Steve Avery going, he's pitching this one. He needs a good outing. They keep saying he's pitching okay, but he isn't. Yeah, he, he had maybe a better outing, let's say, his last time out against the Cubs, but let's face it, he gave up three long balls that night, and that was the only runs he gave up. They were all solo shots, but he dug himself a hole, and the Braves couldn't get out of it. And he sucked up another loss. And when you look at the mechanics, they talk about how he and Leo Mazzoni have been working real hard on the side to try to iron out some of those problems. But so far, the results have not been what I know Steve wants. He's very dedicated. He's very confident that he can get it turned around. He, as he has said in the past, he doesn't want to be the guy that everybody points at in the rotation, says he's the only guy that's not holding up his end. Steve's going to try to get back on track tonight against the Marlins. He's one in one lifetime against them. Maybe it'll be tonight. Pat Rapp will pitch for the Marlins. He's done quite well against the Braves. Keep an eye on Avery. See if maybe he doesn't rush himself too much. That's my theory. But then again, I was 0-2 my senior year in high school as a pitcher, so I don't guess I qualify as an expert. Yeah, but we had a good hook, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, well, maybe that will get your mechanics worked out, too. I got your mechanics. And back with the starting lineups, play-by-play -play story right after this. Joe and Skip back at Joe Robbie Stadium. We get set for the regularly scheduled game for tonight between the Braves and the Marlins. If you just joined us, Braves finished off the Marlins and that suspended game. Final score six to three. Here are the Pep Boys starting lineup first for the Atlanta Braves. Marquise Grissom, who homered already once tonight, will lead it off in center field. Mark Lemke bats second at second base. Chipper Jones third, and he'll play third. At first base, the cleanup hitter Fred McGriff. David Justice will bat fifth in right field. Ryan Cusco will be in left tonight batting sixth. Bottom third of the order. Charlie O'Brien the catcher batting seventh. Rafael Belliard hits eighth at shortstop and Steve Avery is the pitcher batting ninth. The Marlins have just taken the field. Here's their defensive setup. Jeff Conine in left. Chuck Carr in center. And Gary Sheffield in right. Former Brave Terry Pendleton will be at third base. Kurt Abbott plays at shortstop. Kilvio Veras the second baseman and Greg Colburn is at first base. Rookie Charles Johnson behind the dish and on the mound Pat Rapp. 28 years old, 6'3", 215, big guy out of Sulphur, Louisiana, a 15th round choice back in 89 out of Southern Mississippi. He's having a pretty good year. You see his ERA at 4.16, lifetime 1-0 against the Braves. And his record, two games above 500, if he can keep it above 500, would be the first time he's had a winning season since coming to the big leagues. Umpires for tonight's ball game, same as what we saw in the suspended game. And talking to Harry Wendelstead today, he said that the rule of thumb that he uses in suspended games is that if the umpire behind the plate does not work four innings, he's right back behind the dish for the second game as well. So that's Jeff Kellogg, Rich Reeker at first, the crew chief Harry Wendelstead is at second, and Randy Marsh at third. And also talking to Harry about that incident in Houston, he said it was quite ugly, needless to say, in that brawl between the Astros and the uh, Cincinnati Reds. But he, he said it was pretty obvious that Fernandez 
Xavier Hernandez was going head hunting and that's what caused more problems than anything. Yes, Borders and, and Ron Gann had some problems, but he said in his opinion, when Borders came to the plate and, and got a piece of Benito Santiago, he said he was expecting a collision. He just thought it was gonna be a close play, he was expecting a collision and they bumped. No more, no less, didn't take a cheap shot. The Reds thought otherwise. Marquise Grissom leads off here against Pat Rapp. Tell you something about Mr. Rapp. If you're a young player, maybe this will, and you're struggling, this might help you out. But first, his first pitch is a strike to Grissom, who had a two-run homer in the suspended game. Mr. Rapp, when he was a junior at the University of Southern Mississippi, first the pitch hit hard but foul on the right side. Junior in college, he was four and six with a 4.39 earned run average. And as a senior, he was seven and eight with a 5.81 earned run average. And still, he was drafted by the Giants, then drafted high in the first round by the Marlins. So just because things are going bad for you, I mean, if you just went on records, there's a guy who had never been drafted at all, and here he is pitching and pitching effectively in the major leagues. The one-two pitch, fly ball right field. Sheffield over near the line has plenty of room and puts it away, one up. So Grissom is retired and Mark Lemke the batter. The Lemmer scored the go ahead run in the suspended game. This is a good playing surface here at Joe Robbie Stadium but it's absolutely soaking wet right now after dumping the tarp a couple of times out in the outfield. Plus they've already had a couple of football games here needless to say with the Dolphins. So it's a little more chewed up than usual and the outfielders are going to have to be careful with their footing. There's a strike to Lemke. Are the Pirates playing? Is that Montreal they're playing tonight? Can you see on that score? No, that's uh, I believe that's one of their minor league affiliates. Oh, oh it's uh, Portland. I uh -huh. see. Well, Portland's beaten whoever they're playing 12 to nothing after three. Yeah, the NH guys out there are struggling. New Haven, perhaps. San Diego failed to score in the first at St. Louis. American League Cleveland 2-1 over Seattle after three and a half. White Sox failed to score in the first to Texas. Good pitch. Breaking ball outside corner. Lemke's out of there. Two down. He throws him with an off-speed curveball. He throws hard. Has a curve and a slider. This is the off-speed pitch that Skip referred to. And he's also got a slider that's a little bit harder. Keep the hitters off balance. Chipper Jones stands in with 19 homers, 72 runs driven in. Hits that ball hard, but right at Barris, and Rapp has a very easy first inning. One, two, three, nothing going. Bottom of the first, no score. Every Saturday, college football takes the field. Catch all the action with host Bob Lorenz and analyst Danny Sheridan, bringing you the first look at the teams, the players, and the key matchups on College Football Preview. Saturday, 11.30 Eastern on CNN. News travels fast. This just in to headline That's news. why people turn to headline news for continuously updated sports reports. Because it doesn't matter what hour of the day it is, the time for headline news is always now. Some wet but happy Braves fans looking on as we go to the bottom half of the first inning. Here's Rene Latchman's starting lineup tonight. Kilvio Veras will lead it off. He's leading the major leagues in stolen bases. Chuck Carr, then Gary Sheffield. Jeff Conine, the cleanup hitter, followed by Terry Pendleton and Greg Colburn. Kurt Abbott, Charles Johnson, Pat Rapp, the bottom third of the order. For the Braves defensively, Klesko, Grissom, and Justice in the outfield. Jones, Balliard, Lemke, and McGriff on the infield. Charlie O'Brien behind the plate, and Steve Avery on the hill for his 25th start. And the first pitch is ripped into right center, but Justice is there, one out. Barris came in with 47 stolen bases and hit the daylight side of the ball, but out. One away, here's Chuck Carr, who about 10 days ago, the fish said, that right-handed, you can't do it left-handed. Yeah, he was hitting about a buck 60, buck 70 left-handed. They said, why don't you give up on the switch hitting, stick with the right-handed, and as a result, he is platooning in, so in center field with Jesus Tavares, who is also a switch hitter, but that's better left-handed. 
Carr at 222. He has 21 stolen bases. As a part-time player, he's been on the disabled list this year. He's played an 89 game. He can really run. Ground ball deep short. Let's see if he can leg this one out. It'll be close. High throw. Safe. I think he almost cost himself the hit by sliding, but he got in there anyway. He was also watching the ground ball to see if it get, was going to get through in the hole. And that slowed him down a little bit, but went out and got an outside pitch and then legged it out. He can fly, and that's what they want him to do is just put the ball in play and then let your speed work. Most people say if you just keep running through the bag, you get there quicker than if you yes. dive, but he made it, and that's all that's important. So now Avery will have to be very careful here. See if we see the old snap throw. Now he slide steps to the plate inside. One ball, no strength. Runner at first, one out. Gary Sheffield hitting 306. Nine homers, 26 RBI. Boy, I wish the Marlins would have taken me up on my idea before the suspended game. I thought that was a good idea. Uh-oh. That's not a good idea. Two to nothing. And I think he is physically, but boy, he is getting rocked. That looked like an off speed pitch, too, that Sheffield had to reach for a little. Let's watch. Breaking ball coming into him, and it was coming right into a good zone for him. Change up, perhaps, the way it was spinning. This guy off the disabled list already four homers. Another bullet up the middle. Jeff Conine is aboard. Four homers and a double in four games plus one at bat since coming off the disabled list for Sheffield. In his last 12 and a third innings, Avery has given up six home runs and 21 hits. And he gets behind early, and that certainly is not only hard on your confidence it's tough on your offense to be able to battle back. Here's Terry Pendleton. TP having a good solid year hitting 300 on the nose. 11 homers 65 RBI upstairs one ball no strengths. Two nothing Florida the Braves won the suspended game but they're down early here. The need. And a lot of Terry's damage has been coming right handed, hitting 341 right handed. You know what might be a, a good idea for somebody, one of us tomorrow? Line drive, caught by Belliard. A little looper, he didn't get quite enough of it to get it to the outfield. Might be time to sidle up to Pendleton tomorrow and say, What's with Avery? As an opposing player who played behind Steve, he might be in a good position yep. to. Not a bad idea. Figure it out. Did you ever tell everybody what your idea was about Sheffield? Well, you know, he got had to be carried off the field injured just as the suspended game was suspended. I thought it would have been. Here's Greg Colburn. Been neat if they would have taken the field here and. Then they would have carried Sheffield back out to right field and he could have leaped to his feet and said I'm cured all in one game. Right? I think it's wonderful. They didn't, I can't believe they didn't take you up on no it. sale. High drive center field back goes Grissom he's got room. It's a big ballpark out there and the inning is over but not before two run score on three hits Sheffield Homer the big blow. One runner was left at the end of an inning your score two nothing Marlins. I've stopped playing baseball now, but my son Reed just signed a pro contract. Sometimes we go over his game, and if he asks, I tell him what I know. Like when your muscles get sore, take Advil. Just a couple are strong, fast, and work for me. And Advil's gentle on my stomach. If it'll work on these old muscles, 
but I know it'll work on mine. Nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. Steve Avery, a puzzled young man, as he sits and agonizes on the Atlanta bench, down two nothing after one. And Rapp deals to McGriff. Good oh, cut, but he missed it 0-1. Fred at 273, 23 homers, 81 RBI. That ball is hit well, but it's a big ballpark out there. In fact, he didn't hit it as well as I thought. One out. He's one of the fans favorites. You saw him slide at first to get the infield hit before the homer. Misjudged the fly ball hit by McGriff but rallied with his speed to make the catch. David Justice the batter. Ramp has set down four in a row. David has had good fortune against this guy. Five out of ten. Ramp one and zero against the Braves in his career. He's out of Sunrise, Florida. Check swing strike. All in one. Good breaking ball. He beat the Braves back on August 16th in Atlanta. Worked six innings. Gave up only two runs. Won the ball game eight five. Rounded weekly to first. Colbert will take it himself. Two out. Boy, it's that time of year, but when we have a moment, get a shot of the Marlins bullpen. <laughs> Standing room only down there. There must be 20 guys in that bullpen. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Fifteen or sixteen of them. You have to have a ticket. Assigned seating. Ryan Plesko, the batter, and it's downstairs. One ball, no strengths. Plesko, three out of eight against Pat Rapp in his career, a home run in Clifford. Just missed inside. Two balls, no strike. Ryan's had a good year. He's having even a better September off to a good start this month. Three and oh, the count. Charlie O'Brien is next. He's worn this guy out too. One thousand slugging percentage. That's pretty good. On four straight, Plesko draws a two-out walk. First Atlanta base runner. Charlie O'Brien, six out of eight against Rapp, a home run included. Charlie at 257 on the year. Needless to say, Pat Rapp pitched pretty well against the Braves in that suspended game, too, when Rob Nen came in in relief after blanking the Braves for seven innings. He does throw hard enough to keep the batters off balance. You've seen a slow curve, you've seen a slider. There's a strike right through there. One and one the count. More rain is in the forecast. That's what makes that two nothing early deficit. A little shaky. Braves magic number is down to six now. Curve outside. And the Phillies are idle tonight. Is that right? It is correct. Not playing that loose two American League games are like the games the Braves played in Pittsburgh. Those one game stopovers. Yeah. I'm glad that's behind us. Good breaking ball. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Ramp went five innings against us. Four hits, no runs, struck out five, walked one. At the start of that suspended game. He went around and the inning is over. Takes the bad ball. Second strikeout for Rapp. No hits, no runs. No airs. A runner left. We go to the bottom of the second. The Marlins lead the Braves 2 0.
We go to the bottom half of the second inning. Kurt Abbott will lead it off. The Marlin shortstop. He's hitting 244, 16 homers, 52 runs batted in. Cardinals have a run. They lead the Padres 1 0 after an inning and a half. A little bit low. One ball, no strikes to Kurt Abbott, former Oakland performer. Charles Johnson is on deck. Abbott started a swing, checked it in time. You mentioned earlier tonight this guy's got some pop in his bat. That's obvious with his 16 home runs this year. And I think that's part of why his average suffers a little bit. He likes hitting home runs and takes a big swing. Hit that ball pretty well, but not well enough. Near the warning track, just snaps the glove. And there's the first out in the bottom half of the second inning. Braves fans, now's your chance to reserve 1996 season tickets. And by doing so, secure the right to purchase playoff tickets for this year that's until September 15th for every 300 non refundable deposit placed toward the purchase of new 1996 Atlanta Braves season ticket you will qualify for the right to purchase one ticket to each game of the 95 playoffs and World Series played in Atlanta please act quickly this offer expires September 15th based on limited availability for more information please call the Braves 404 five seven seven nine one hundred in fact I advise you to call that number in any event because it's all pretty confusing. Ground ball to short should be easy. Hell yard up and firing. Two down. I guess everything you probably want to know about next year's season tickets, postseason tickets are on that sheet. Yeah, it's sort of like yeah. a rap sheet. <laughs> but the number 404 5779 100. They'll answer any question you got. Pat Rapp hits a foul to right. 0 oh 1. Good thing it didn't drop in the bullpen. There'd be a big brawl down there. The crowd, if you want to call it that, is a swimmer. 15, 17,000, something like that. What football team was it that was caught during an exhibition game, preseason game, eating hot dogs? Is that Seattle? Uh, yeah. Yes, On the was. bench? They'd have to back a truck into the Marlins bullpen if they wanted to give everybody a hot dog down there. That one just went into that bullpen. Not a hot dog, but a foul ball. Oh, and two, the count. And the inning is over, and Avery rallies a little bit, works a one, two, three second. And records his first strikeout of the game at the end of two innings. It's 2-0. The Marlins lead the Braves. When I'm at the ballpark, there's just one thing on my mind. Hologram baseball cards are back at Denny's. You get an upper deck card free with any purchase from Denny's Classic Hits menu. So collect all 28. They're more exciting than the game. Well, almost. We go to the top half of the third inning at Joe Robbie Stadium and a reminder that this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. But if Rafael Belliard hits a homer tonight, I think his wife has permission to put in the VCR and get ready to tape that baby. He'll hit it in the rain if he hits it in this inning. It started again as they predicted, and it's supposed to get harder as the night goes on. Oh, oh, oh and won the count. 1,636 at bats since Rafi he hit one out. He walked through the dugout tonight before batting practice, and he says, maybe tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he says that every night. Yeah. <laughs> They 0 1. 0 and 2. Good breaking ball. Rap coming right over the top of that pitch, and it that's a tough pitch to He's pick up and drive through the middle or do anything with it the way it's dropping right on the plate. He's in a hurry too. He knows the situation here. And would like to polish him off in a hurry. This park, they have done such a terrific job here of making this a comforting, comfortable baseball park. 
when it's really a football stadium. Pendleton doesn't miss many of those. One away. When I was first here, it was to do NFL football for TNT, and they were showing me how they were going to do it. And I told the guys, that's not going to work. Oh, I was wrong. It looks terrific. The one thing I miss is now that football season has started, they've taken out the barbecue area out there in right center field. That's a neat spot during the regular baseball season. The rain increases a little bit, but it's still just a light Florida shower at the moment. Steve Avery, a good hitting pitcher. He's at 233, two homers, four runs driven in. Had a good cut there, but he fouled it back. Cleveland increases its lead to four to one over Seattle at the end of five innings in Cleveland. Chicago and Texas scoreless after two and a half. Two, three, and oh here for the Marlins. The Braves nothing but zeros, and it's still that way. Grant made a good play, two down. This guy came in at nine and seven with a 4.16. He's an impressive looking pitcher. He talked about his record and numbers in college. Maybe he's just building up to this point. Maybe he's just now maturing into the type pitcher that they thought he might be. I don't know who signed him or any of that, but he must have had a good arm. Signed by Giant Scout Mike mm -hmm. Russell, as a matter of fact. But it's obvious he wasn't signed off his record. Somebody sat and watched him pitch. The rain increases, as you see. Grissom flying to right his first time. I just had a horrible thought. Well, it wouldn't be that horrible because it would happen tomorrow, but what if we rally? <laughs> Tie this game in the top of the ninth again, and we have another suspended game. It would beat the alternative. We are in the third. It's 2 0 Florida. Gary Sheffield, a two run first inning homer. Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you. Pete Van Warren, Don Sutton will join you halfway through. Line down the right field line, but it is foul. Got that pitch up, and Marquise almost made him pay. This is not the same Marlins team the Braves worked over early in the year. Atlanta now 8 and 1 against the Marlins, but this team has played much better since the All-Star break. They are 31 and 22 since the break. Look out. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball up and away and Marquise was all over that pitch, so Rapp is trying to move him back a little. A little swinging butt out in front of the plate. Johnson pounces on it, and the inning is over. One, two, three, nothing doing. We move to the bottom half of the third inning. The Marlins lead the Braves two to nothing. NASCAR is on TBS Saturday night after the sun goes down. The kick. The Jack and the rock stars of the circuit turn up the volume at the short track at Richmond. It's under the lights in prime time, and there's no place to let up at the Miller Genuine Track 400. Live, 7:30 Eastern, Saturday night. You're on the circuit with TBS. The rain continues to fall here, but as they say in golf, they're going to play on through. Kivio Veris takes the strike in the bottom of the third. Is underway. Line to right. His first time. Harry Wendelstead, the man who has to make the decision. Yeah, I don't the, think I don't think the heavy stuff will be here for a while. The forecast being what it is, I would imagine they'll just play as long as they can play. In there again. This guy has 47 stolen bases and 62 attempts. And he's hitting a little bit better than a lot of people thought he would, myself included. He's hitting 253. Good pitch. He's out of there this time. Second strikeout for Avery. Well, that fastball had something on it, and he put it in a A1 position at the knees on the outside corner. Charlie's target barely moved. A 
and right over the top. Vera is hitting better in the big leagues than he did last year in Triple A. Last year he was a 249 hitter at Norfolk in the Mets organization. Here's Chuck Carr. He winds up on the deck. He's down there more than that guy McNeely. 0 and 1. <laughs> Inside a ball on the strike. Braves are hitless in this game. Must have been low. There are some pretty good pitches being thrown by Steve Avery at the moment. Not didn't get the call on the last two, but they were well placed. Good curve ball, good fastball that was down. Just missed. Three and one. Just missing. Carr leg down an infield hit scored in front of Sheffield's homer in the first. That's in there. It's three and two. It's part of their turnaround and their record being able to handle left handed starters a little bit better. Well, Steve had slowed down a little bit. See who can handle the raindrops. Tipper says he can do it. And it works out that he's correct. Two down. Here's Sheffield again. He had his 10th homer. Drove in his 27th and 28th runs. It's been virtually a wasted year for him because of injury. This is only his 46th game of the year and only his 162nd at bat. He must have made a miraculous recovery after the torn ligament in his thumb, the way he's swinging the bat. When you think about the way he waves that bat around. When that happened, everybody said, well, see in 96. Yeah. I was sure he was through. Yeah. Surprised everybody. A real weird injury as he rounded second. He tried to stop. His feet went out from under him a little bit. And he tried to brace his fall with his left hand. And that's when he injured his thumb. But you've seen him wave that bat around before, and you know how strong he has to be to control the bat. They say he gets it through the strike zone about as quick as anybody. Good play by McGriff to save Chipper. And the third inning is history. One, two, three, nothing doing. We move to the fourth. See if they play on through. They're going to. It's two nothing in favor of the Marlins. <laughs> we go to the fourth inning here. Time for us to have our AFLAC trivia question. Which tonight is, who was the first rookie in Major League history to hit three home runs in a game? The answer will come to you in a half inning. The light rain continues to fall. We go to the fourth, and here with the play-by-play -play story, the always perspicacious Joe Simpson. Oh, but I feel a lot better tonight. Thank you. Good. Mark Glimke will lead it off. He struck out his first time up. Good curve in there for a strike. I think what Avery, you say you're telling him to slow down a little bit. I know you were thinking, you know, stall because of the rain, but maybe he's trying to get his offense up there quickly so they could get the lead back for him, and then he could wipe them out. Nice play by Abbott. And Lemke is robbed of a base hit. I just seriously wish he would slow down just a little bit. Maybe think just a little bit. He throws so fast. He says, uh, he told me recently that he knows he does that sometimes, especially when there are runners on base, that he gets into a real almost hurry up type offense as he's getting into his delivery. Chipper again hits one towards second. And again, Barris has him. And a quick start here in the fourth inning with the skies threatening to open up, although it has lightened up a little bit here. Still sprinkling, but not as hard as it was. Fred's gone into his four corners. He's taking a lot of time getting up there. Fred says a home run per series, and he'll have his 30 homers. And if he gets anything more than that, He'll have the bonus. Tell you, the great compliment to this guy is we're all talking about him having an off year, and by his standards, he is. But there, are about 90 percent of the players in Major League Baseball would kill for his stats. Mm -hmm. And yet, he still has a chance in a shortened season to reach those numbers that he traditionally reaches. Well, he did it last year in a shortened season. That's for sure. 34 homers by August 12th last year. No 
Oh, one pitch. A little low. Fred's average at 273. He's a career 285 hitter. Another changeup. Fred had a little better idea on that one as far as the speed. I think he saw that one out of Rap's hand pretty well, but fouled it right at the plate. It's one and two. Isn't Cleveland's magic number two coming into the day? And they're leading Seattle four to one. So they will almost certainly be the first team to punch a divisional title. They can definitely score runs. Perhaps one two pitch. Another chance for Varis. He's got plenty of time and another one, two, three inning for Pat Rapp. That is seven in a row since the walk to Klesko, the Braves' only base runner. And we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning, still two to nothing, Marlin. <laughs> Jeff Conine has fouled off the first pitch of the fourth inning for the Marlins. They lead Braves two to nothing. And a fastball keeps him honest one and one. We'll give you the answer to the Affleck trivia question right after we see what Mr. Conine is going to do. He's hitting 393 against lefties coming in, and he has a single already tonight against Avery. The answer is not Jim Gentile. Good. He didn't play for the Braves. No, it's, it's a Braves. That was, that that the, was a left hand hit blue. Those are your hits. One, two pitch. Got him. Good fastball upstairs by Avery. He's got two strikeouts. Make it three strikeouts. There's our Amflak trivia question, and here comes the answer. A Hall of Famer, Braves third baseman Eddie Matthews. Almost nine months to the day after I was born. What are we to make of that? But I'm just a young pup. Here's Terry Pendleton, even younger than that, and he fouls one off the tarp down the line. 0 and 1. <laughs> Terry, four for his last 27. To myself, I'm thinking, where is he going with that, and why do I want to get involved? You don't have to trouble you know, yourself any. I don't think I will. Out of play, 0 and 2. The rain, if anything, has slowed a little bit, so we may be able to get this in. And if anything, Steve Avery has picked up. He's throwing much harder now than he was in the first inning. Good fastball. Keeps Terry honest. The ball and two strikes. And he's got to come in there every now and then with that good fastball. Makes him a much better pitcher. Just missed. Maybe he's found something here. Either that or maybe he just got mad after giving up the home run in the first inning because he seems to be pitching more aggressively and with more confidence here the last couple of innings. And he's retired nine in a row. Two and two to Pendleton. Throw out the first inning. He's got a perfect game work. But unfortunately they count the first inning. Most of the time. Pendleton chokes up on the bat a little bit. Pulls that one down the line. It's going to stay. No, it's not. It's going to stay fair because he hit it off the brand a little bit of the bat, but it hooked foul. Pendleton this year with 26 doubles and a triple to go with his 11 home runs. There were rumors that he might be going to a contending ball club before the September 1st deadline. But the Marlins, I think, certainly didn't want to give him away, and the cost was too much for most everybody's liking. Steve Avery wants a dry rosin bag and gets it.
Avery ready to go back to work. 2-2. Two -two. Good fastball, and all Pendleton can do is fight it off. Terry now 35 years old, still makes his home in Duluth, suburb of Atlanta. His 11th year in the big leagues. Three and two. He's had a good at bat here against Avery, fighting off some pretty tough pitches. Payoff pitch. Slider popped up. Lemke calls for it. And right about the 39 yard line made the play. Nice catch. I think he kept both feet in bounds. Greg Colburn. Flying to center his first time up. He's hit in 17 straight. 21 homers, 80 RBIs, and eight of his 21 homers have come on the first pitch. Goes after the first one, but Belliard's there to plug up the hole. Long throw, got him. Nice play, Raphael Belliard. And Steve Avery has another 1-2-3 inning. If the Braves need some runs, we go to the fifth. Still 2-0 Marlins. Braves still looking for their first hit as we go to the top half of the fifth inning. David Justice, Ryan Klesko, and Charlie O'Brien against Pat Rapp. Rapp has allowed only one base runner. That was a two-out walk to Klesko in the second inning. Fastball finds a corner. The 0 1 pitch fought off. Swimming toward the hole. Abbott can't come up with it cleanly and can't throw him out. That ball had a lot of spin on it, and even after he got it in his glove, he couldn't get a good grip on the ball. And the Braves have another base runner. Let's see how they score it. One, two, three, four, five steps before he throws the ball. And David runs everything out that's just like the air that got things started in the ninth inning in the suspended mm -hmm. game. They cornered an air. I think that's a good call. He hasn't allowed a hit yet. You hate to see it come like that. Plus go the hitter. He walked his first time up, and Johnson makes a nice play to keep Justice at first. Brian having an outstanding year, hitting 314, 18 homers, 59 RBIs. Doubled in a couple of runs yesterday. 